Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Spigot series. In this video, I'll teach you how to install MySQL on your computer so that you can use MySQL with your Minecraft plugins. Okay guys, welcome back. Last episode, I gave you an introduction to SQL databases and explain what they are, how we can use them to make data persistent and all that fun stuff. And so this time I'm gonna show you how to install a MySQL database or MySQL server on your computer so that you can make MySQL databases on your computer and hook it up to your plugin, all right? You may be wondering why I'm going with MySQL first and not something easier like SQLite or some other uh, SQL database. But the reason I'm going with MySQL specifically is because it's the most popular and it's the one that everyone knows about already and has probably been interested in using. And also if you ever rented a Minecraft server from a server host like GG servers or something like that, um, you can often get a MySQL database along with the server. And so it's important to know how to use MySQL and also um, how to hook it up to your plugin and all that stuff. Because you can imagine that people who use your plugins, if you're going to be selling your plugins or uh, publicly posting your plugins for free, you can imagine that they would be using, you know, server hosting. So they may have a MySQL database and that's probably what they're using in most cases. But um, we're going to explore some other options where you can essentially create your own database within the plugin itself. It's going to be really, really cool. You'll see. But yeah, first we're going to start with MySQL, get that out of the way and understand it. And uh, it's really cool though, because we're not going to only install MySQL. We're also going to install PHP MyAdmin, which I showed you last uh, episode in the presentation which is a way for you to view the data online, locally on your computer or wherever. It doesn't have to be on your computer, just connect to the database and there you go. Now there's different ways to install a MySQL server or MySQL database. I'm gonna use those two terms interchangeably. If I ever say MySQL database or SQL database, technically you're supposed to say MySQL server. The server is the thing that has multiple databases within it. There's a bunch of different terminology and some of them are more correct than others, but Generally speaking, I like to just call it a MySQL database, even though even though the thing that we're about to install can have multiple databases within it, because it wouldn't make sense if you can only have one database, that'd be very limited. But anyway, MySQL is actually kind of hard to install on its own. It's kind of tricky. So what we're gonna be using is something called XAMPP or WAMP. You can choose between the two. Um, I've used both of these before. Um, one of these I just use for personal stuff, but the other one I use for school, specifically for my databases class in college, and actually found this one to be better. This one's specifically for Windows, so if you're using something like Mac or Linux, then this is probably not the option for you. You probably wanna go with this one, which is cross-platform. But what these things are, it's essentially a bundle of software for PHP development. But the point is, is that it has the software that we need, specifically the MySQL database, along with PHP MyAdmin, which is the online panel to view the data and work with the database and stuff like that. So they both have the same stuff pretty much. They include Apache, which is a web server, MariaDB, which is a type of MySQL server pretty much, PHP, you know what that is probably, programming language, and then Perl, I think that's a framework uh, within PHP, I'm not sure. Um, so that's AMP, and then you have WAMP, which is Windows, Apache, MySQL, PHP. So pretty self-explanatory there. Like I said, I like this one better, so I'm going to be using this one. And the installation process, as far as I remember, is actually much easier with this one. So it's in French because, uh, I don't know, I guess French people like PHP. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So click WAMP Server 64-bit, and then click, uh, you can download it directly, blah, blah, blah. And then click, or just save it wherever you want it to be saved. So I'm just going to save it uh, somewhere safe. Now it's downloading, so now you're going to go through the installation process just as you would with anything that you're installing. But uh, I'll go through that process with you. So give me a second for this to stop downloading. Okay, so I'm gonna click yes. Now it's the language, okay, English. I accept the agreement, next. Uh, blah, 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 next. Uh, now you choose where you want it to be installed. I don't really care, so I'm just gonna leave it on my C drive. Next, and this one's a little important. So here you can choose specifically the software that you want. So what like what specific language version of PHP you want. In this case, it has PHP 8. We don't really care about that at all, right? We're not actually using PHP um, for personal purposes or development purposes on our end. But um, yeah, so just leave it how it is there. And then MariaDB, um, we don't really care about that. But MySQL is the thing we really care about. So MySQL 8, we want the latest one. Um, I'm not sure the difference between 5 and 8, but we're just going to use the latest one because that just makes sense, right? Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just select MySQL 8 to get the latest version that it offers. Then click Next. Uh, click Next. Install. 
And then now it's going to take a second to install, a few minutes probably. Uh, and then I'll be right back to try it out. Oh, by the way, I just looked up the difference between MariaDB and MySQL because they are very similar as far as I can tell. And it says that MariaDB is a database management system, just like MySQL. It's relational, just like MySQL. It's open source. And then it's a community developed fork of MySQL. So I guess it's a database implementation that is based on MySQL, but it's different. So it's uh, open source and all that fun stuff. So anyway, so now it's going to ask you, um, Internet Explorer will be used as browser by WAMP server, which is absurd. Like who the heck still has Internet Explorer? So I'm going to, it says, do you want to choose a different browser? I'm going to say yes. And now what you want to do is find where you have your browser installed. So if you're using Chrome, just find Chrome. If you're using Brave like me, then uh, find that. So usually it's going to be in your program files. Um, so on your local C drive, local disk C drive, either you have program files and then you have program files for x86. So either one of these will have it. Um, I think Brave is in this one. So program files, Brave software, Brave browser, uh, application. So make sure to find the exe file and then select that and then click OK. And now it's asking about the text editor. I don't really care. All right, looks like it's done now. So we can go ahead and uh, start it up and try it out. So to start it up, if it's not already started, you just you know search it, WAMP server 64, and then click enter. Now just do yes, and then now it's going to pop up a command prompt thingy uh, just multiple times. That's how you know it's starting. And then it'll pop up down here, so it's just starting everything automatically. It says all services running, as you can see, and that's how you know it works. And then you can double, you can uh, left click to see this information, or you, oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to click that. Or you can right click to see other information, so that's cool. But I'm going to left click, and then if you want to go to PHP My Admin, obviously just hover over that. Click this, now it's gonna pop up automatically on your browser. And here is where you can actually view your MySQL database that is now running. So it's all automatically started for you. You don't really have to do anything. It's automatically set up for you. It's all magic and that's really cool. So that's just beautiful, not that hard. Uh, it could have been harder if we didn't use this. So now to log into this, you're gonna log in with the uh, details of your MySQL database. So the default username is just gonna be root and then the password, there is no password. So this is the default configuration of your MySQL database. All right, so click go to log in. So these are the default databases created by MySQL. So though you can pretty much ignore those. So we're gonna create our own new database and we're gonna give it a name of test. I already had that name before, so test. Click create, and now we have a new test database. And then a database has tables in it. The tables are what stores the data, if you remember from last episode. So we're gonna create a new table. Oh, uh, we gotta put a name. So we're gonna call it, um, what do we call this? People, it's probably the worst name ever. People, four columns, go. Now you can specify the data type of each of the columns. These are all the different MySQL data, data types, by the way. We'll explore some of these in the next episode. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You don't have to know how to use any of this. Uh, obviously, I'm expecting a lot of you guys not to ever have used MySQL or SQL in general. So this may be foreign to you, but that's okay. It's fun to just play around and know that you can log into this thing, this online panel here uh, to actually view your, your database. And so obviously there's no data in it at the moment, but once we start making our plug in the next episode, we can populate it with data, create tables within the code using JDBC, and we can view everything in here to make sure it's all working. Okay, so that's why we set up this part uh, obviously, we needed the MySQL database, but also we need a PHP My Admin so that we can do development more easily. Otherwise, you have to use some other tool. But anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. Now you know how to install MySQL and PHP My Admin on your Windows computer. If you don't have Windows or you don't want to use WAMP, then you can use XAMPP, which is another very popular option. So you can install that, and it should be pretty much the exact same just probably a little different. Hopefully you guys are excited to get started with the plugin. So stay tuned for next episode and peace. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. 
So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.